first. Today's video, I'm going to do a uh, basically an overview, complete overview of my Klipsch R51M bookshelf speakers. Uh, this is an older model. I've had them, uh, I don't know, maybe six years or so. And at the time, that was their entry-level speaker. Since then, they've come out with uh, a number of others below this, uh, the reference series. Uh, it's a speaker that was originally my rear surround speaker. And then I, I had later upgraded. And then I tried these out just as stereo bookshelf speakers. Initially was not happy with them. Then I broke them in and I was really amazed at how good these speakers sounded. Uh, it took a bit to break them in, but once it was broke, they were broken in, um, they had a real nice growl to them. I really like them. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can make them better with a few uh, minor modifications. But first I want to see uh, what's actually, what the makeup of the speaker actually is. So as uh, the first test, I'm going to check for the polarity. So I'm going to turn off some of the lights and we'll do a polarity test, see if perhaps the tweeter is reverse polarity, which is sometimes necessary depending on the crossover. So we'll do that now. For the polarity test, I'm going to use this simple speaker polarity checker. I have a CD-ROM in the player and it plays pulses and then you use the checker to uh, read those pulses. If you get three green blinks and one red, then it's regular polarity or positive polarity, whatever you want to call it. If you get three red blinks and then one green, uh, then it's reverse polarity. These come in handy, especially uh, like for instance, I installed my car stereo and I thought I have uh, accidentally reversed the polarity of one of the speakers. So I went through each speaker with this and double checked it, found out that I was actually correct. So I will play the disc now. I don't know if you can hear those pulses through my lav mic. And hopefully you'll be able to see the lights. Green, green, red, green, 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 red. And on the tweeter, green, green, red, green, 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 red. So neither the, the tweeter is not reverse polarity. In some cases, depending on how the crossover is designed, uh, it can actually cause the two drivers to be out of phase. Don't confuse out of phase. Don't confuse phase with polarity, two different things. But if they are out of phase, reversing the polarity can actually put them back into phase. And if you're interested in that subject, you do a search, you'll find, uh, I'm sure, loads and loads of information that will uh, enlighten you on that. Uh, next, let's, let's check the weight of this speaker. For weight, we are clocking in at 9 pounds, 6.3 ounces. That's fairly hefty for the size of this speaker. And for outside the United States and everybody on the metric system, we are at 4 kilogram, 260 grams. Is that 4.26 kilogram? I'm going to start with the tweeter removal and these little uh, cap screws that you see, decorative cap screws that you see here, they take a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. And I recommend that you never use power tools when removing screws around a speaker driver, especially, especially anything small or a woofer, because you can pull that trigger, it can skip out of there and poke right through the surround or the speaker itself. Okay. 
Okay. Speaker wires are wrapped in foam to prevent any rattles happening. There is a sleeve over top of the connector and I will take a close-up photo. There is a little button down in here that you have to press to release the wire from the tab on the speaker. And sometimes it can be a little tricky. That one came right off. Um, always look for that because if you try pulling this connector off the speaker without pressing down on that little tab, you can wind up ripping the terminal right off the speaker and your speaker's ruined. Uh, polarity is you don't have to worry too much about when you hook your speakers back together. Let me get this off of here. Uh, because there is two different size terminals on the speaker. These little rubber boots are your nemesis. All right, let me cut away. I'll be back in a second. And here is the Eclipse reference tweeter. That's what we have to work with. Not much of a magnet there, but a little bit more robust than I was expecting. I was expecting a fairly thin plastic. Um, but this is actually fairly heavy. I'm pretty impressed by this. Now let's remove the woofer and see what we have there. Here is the IMG woofer removed. Uh, from what I understand, this is uh, IMG is injected molded graphite. And what I believe is it's aluminum with uh, graphite injected in the middle. Or it's possible this is just a graphite cone painted copper. But I originally uh, believed, uh, read somewhere, that it's actually aluminum sandwiching a thin layer of graphite in it. Could be wrong. But I want to show you something fairly interesting about this woofer, and it seems to be something that Clips uh, maybe does through most of the line, or at least through the um, reference premiere and the reference series, and that is how the voice coil breathes. Now, on most speakers you see, you will look down in here and you'll have this webbing there that's called the spider, and that supports the voice coil. And you won't see this open gap down here. With the clip speakers, you can look right through there and you can see the voice coil itself. I don't know if I can get a good shot with my camera here. See that? You can see the coil down there. Uh, I'm assuming they do this for cooling purposes so that you can push these speakers a little harder without frying them out. It's my assumption, uh, but that's fairly unique and, um, and maybe it's not that unique, I don't know, uh, but for me I've only seen it in my clip speakers. Now I'm going to remove the binding post plate and we will have a look at the crossover network. Now, a review of the crossover shows me uh, that hot comes in, and for the tweeter, it goes through the uh, this 4.7 ohm resistor, then goes over to this 5.1 microfarad capacitor, off to the tweeter, and then shunting to ground from the uh, positive side of this from the the tweeter lead side, we'll say, uh, through this 
uh, millihenry inductor to, gr to ground. And then on the woofer side, it comes in, goes through this inductor. I tried to get a reading on it, but I couldn't. I would have to do a reading on it by removing it from the circuit. And they glue these suckers in there really good. It's buried in there in glue. The value is actually printed on the board underneath all that glue. But it goes through the inductor to the woofer. And then from there, it also shunts to ground via uh, this 43 microfarad capacitor. And then from the capacitor, it goes to this 2 ohm resistor and then to ground. Now, as far as the speaker impedance, since using a multimeter won't give you an actual accurate reading, I'm going to wait on that until I get some other equipment that I'm lining up to purchase that will give me accurate readings of the impedance and other specifications as far as the drivers go. And at that point, that's when I will uh, dig into this, get this inductor out of there, and find out what the actual impedance, uh, what the actual millihenry uh, value of that inductor is. Cabinet construction is MDF, which always seemed bad to me, but actually it's very good as far as being low resonance, uh, no buzzing of uh, uh, particles within, you know, the old ones used to be flake board, and uh, you could get buzzes and rattle from that. The rear panel is just over half of an inch thick, though I do believe the front of the cabinet is three quarters of an inch thick, which would make sense because uh, both drivers are recessed. The port, cardboard tube, minimal damping, uh, bracing is in the corners, corner bracing, uh, front and back, which is probably sufficient, more than sufficient for a cabinet of this size. Holding that in. And there is no Traxxix uh, horn port on the inside, just one on the outside. Uh, many, uh, here's from a subwoofer I'm working on, will have it on the inside and outside but I don't think there's enough clearance in there to put one on the inside. All right, that is my total teardown of the Klipsch R51M bookshelf speaker. Like I had mentioned earlier, I really like the way this, this speaker sounds. Uh, it has a really nice growl to it, like I said. Uh, it's a really nice rock speaker, uh, but I don't think that it's achieving its full potential. I think with a few modifications, I'll be able to take it to, to much higher, much greater heights, we'll say. We'll take it to much greater heights. Um, if you're interested in seeing that video when it comes out, please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get notification when uh, I post that. And of course, please hit that like button for me and hit that subscribe button. Share it with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.